다 같이 마음 정도 하시고 겸손히 주 앞에 나와 예배 드리시겠습니다. Let us worship our God. 예수께서 가라사대 수고하는 자들아 다 내게로 오라. Come to me, Jesus says, all who are weary. Come to me. 그리고 무거운 짐진 자들아 and you who carry heavy loads. Come to me. 나는 마음이 온유하고 겸손하니 너희 마음이 심을 얻으리라. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let us draw near to Jesus, whose yoke is easy and whose burden is light. Let us pray together. O Lord our God, we give you thanks for the grace that is at work in us through the gift of our baptism, the sign of your threefold name, the communion of your faithful people, the promise of your glorious realm. By the power of your Holy Spirit, poured out upon us in baptism, let your grace and peace grow in us until we gather at your heavenly throne to give you thanks and praise forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now for the prayer of confession. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. O oh God, we make this confession in your presence and in the presence of those whom we have sinned against. We confess that we have broken your community by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Through long years of neglect and denial, we have perpetuated brokenness through our inaction. We say, I wasn't there, or I wasn't alive then, or you cannot blame me. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. We confess that we have benefited from a broken community. 
without acknowledging our own complicity. We claim that the acts of past generations have nothing to do with us. We say that was then. Yet we stand on the shoulders of those who went before, those who made excuses for inaction, enforced separation, and participated in death. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. We confess that we have reinforced a broken community, even as we celebrated that we are created in your image. Our inherent racism denies that black and brown people are created in your image because we have consistently violated the sacred bonds of your covenant, O oh God. We now confess and reject the sin of systemic racism. We have sinned against you and your children. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. We confess that we have perpetuated a broken community. When your covenant, O oh God, is with all people, we have perpetuated a broken covenant by our silence, our fearfulness, and our helplessness as we enjoyed our privilege. This day, we say the names of those we have sinned against. Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Trayvon Martin, and far too many others whose names we say in the silence of our own hearts. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, that you do not hold our sin against us. We pray for your forgiveness. We pray for the forgiveness of those whom we have wronged, generation after generation, even up to this day. Through your gift of Jesus Christ, we declare today that we reject the sin of racism and will commit our lives to ending evil. We will live as you have us live, as people baptized into a covenant community of grace and love. You have shown us what is good, and what do you, O oh Lord, require of us? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. And now for a moment of silent confession. God's compassion is over all of creation. God's mercy covers us and gives us new life. Thanks be to God, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please join me in prayer. Risen Christ, you show us the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Speak to us now as the scripture is read and proclaimed that we may know your presence and be filled with gladness in our hearts. Amen. Our scripture passage today is Psalm 145, verses 8 through 21. Psalm 145, verses 8 through 21. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and God's compassion is over all that has been made. 
All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all God's words and gracious in all God's deeds. You uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. You are just in all your ways and kind in all your doings. You are near to all who call on you, to all who call on you in truth. You fulfill the desire of all who fear you. You also hear their cry and save them. The Lord watches over all who love the Lord, but all the wicked will be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The description of who God is in this psalm is one that I know I have returned to on more than one occasion. How about you? The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. I keep that description of who God is close to me, especially in the days when I feel like I need a little more mercy and steadfast love. In the days when I'm sure that my actions or my words do more to merit God's anger than God's grace. These words that describe the one who has called us, the one that we know through Jesus, these words are comforting to us. But as I read them, I think perhaps they are meant to also be challenging to us. After all, we know, we believe, we profess that we, humankind, has been created in God's image. Each one of us bears that, that divine mark in the very depths of who we are. Our God has breathed breath into our lungs and put that fingerprint on our souls. So if these words describe who God is, aren't they also describing, at least in part, who we are meant to be? If this is who God is, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, then isn't that part of who God is imprinted upon us? upon our deepest selves. It is not enough to give thanks for God's mercy and love. We are also meant to live into that image, woven into who we are. So what would it mean for us as followers of Jesus Christ to claim these words as part of the divine image that lives in us? What would it mean for us to begin to apply these words to our lives, to our words, to our actions? Instead of simply finding comfort in the fact that the one who is divine and creator of heaven and earth is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, what if we could begin to say that of one another across this body of Christ that spans the earth? 
What if we could begin to say of one another, we do indeed know they are Christians for their love, the steadfast love that endures forever, that is the very image of the love God has for the world. I think you might see where I'm going with this. This whole psalm is a praise for who God is and how God acts and how God cares for God's creation. This whole psalm is leading us to raise our voices in gratitude and thanksgiving in awe for God's majesty, for God's provision, for God's care. But if the divine image of God that is a thumbprint on our hearts and souls, if that is meant to help us live into a way that reflects that image, then I would say the words of this psalm giving praise for all of God's works are also meant as a call to us. We are the hands and feet of Christ. We are the body of Christ here on earth. We are the ones who are told to love God with all of who we are and to love our neighbors as ourselves. We are the ones tasked with bringing God's kingdom where all are fully welcome here on earth. And so these words in this psalm, extolling God's creation, praising God's majesty, are also words that call us, the church, the body of Christ, to action. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. Now, my friends, as followers of Jesus, we long for the day when God's kingdom will be fully established here on earth. And in fact, in just a little while, we will pray together with languages from across this world for that very thing. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth. We know, we know that in order for this beautiful kingdom where glory reigns eternal, in order for this beautiful place where all are gathered in, in order for that to come to pass, we, we are the ones who are to be at work. Jesus said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Pray, therefore, to the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest field. Who do you think Jesus meant? Us. We are the workers meant to do God's will and establish God's beloved, eternal, never-ending kingdom here on earth. It's not to be some far off thing. It's not supposed to be something that we only see when we die because God created this world and called it not just good, but very good. God created this world so that people may have abundant life here and now. The fact that that abundant life is out of reach for millions across this planet is not God's design. No. That is, that is our work. 
And because that is our work, because it is the way we divide this beautiful planet, because of the way we decide who gets what, that has been our work because we are the ones who have put these systems and structures into place that press so many down while lifting just a few up because that is what we have done for generations. It is also our work to undo that. Is not this the fast I choose, the prophet Isaiah speaks in God's voice? Is not this the fast I choose to undo the thongs of the yoke, to break every yoke? That is meant to be here and now. On this earth, in this world, in our very flesh and bone. It's not a heavenly prize. It is an earthly promise. And so the words of the rest of this psalm call us as followers of Jesus Christ, call us as bearers of the divine image, call us as breathers of the spirit that empowers and sends us out. The words of this psalm tell us what it is we are to do. The Lord is faithful in all God's words, gracious in all God's deeds. The Lord upholds all who are following, falling, raises up all who are bowed down. Well, let's, let's apply this. The followers of the Lord, you, me, the body of Christ, is faithful in all our words and gracious in all our deeds. The body of Christ, the followers of Jesus, uphold all who are falling and raise up all who are bowed down. Can we say that? Can we say that with truth in our hearts? Can we say that and know in our bones that to the best of our ability with our every breath that we have been committed to this? Not many of us, and I include myself in that. Not many of us can say that. For we turn on the news or walk out into our streets and we see the evidence of people who have fallen down and whose society and the church has turned away from. We see evidence each and every day of people who have been pushed aside as if they are worth less and never invited back in, never given space to live and thrive as God intends. Our health crisis, the global pandemic that we find ourselves in is just the most recent case in point. Hundreds of thousands have died for lack of access to appropriate medical care for lack of access to appropriate protection for those who have sought to offer care. People in communities and neighborhoods here in the United States who have died because their neighborhood hospitals are under-equipped because they live in poorer areas, areas where black, indigenous people of color live that don't have the same funding as the shiny metropolitan hospitals. The current crisis we find ourselves in tells us, it shows us that we cannot claim these words as true in the body of Christ. We have not upheld those who are falling. We have not raised up those who have bowed down. We have not handed out food to all who are hungry. Instead, we hold it back. We pretend that some are more worthy than others, even though God never, never intended that in creation. 
What would it look like if we as the church took these words in this psalm as a challenge, took these words in the psalm as a clear picture of who we are called to be as followers of Jesus Christ in the world today? What if we took this psalm and paired it with the parables from Matthew 25 to help us understand what it means to love our neighbors as ourselves, as people who love our almighty God with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength. The psalm is called a psalm of praise, but I offer it to you today as a call to action. Yes, it is praise for who God is, how God interacts with us in God's beautiful creation. It is a praise of what God intends this world to be. But for us, as followers of Jesus Christ, it is a call to action. We are the ones being called out in this psalm to put our hands to the plow, to put our feet into the ground, to follow where Jesus has led us. We are are being called out to be faithful in tangible ways, to be faithful in ways that begin to change this world. That in our Matthew 25 foci that build congregational vitality, dismantle structural racism, and eradicate systemic poverty, don't you hear the words of this psalm calling out that this is what our good God intends? Don't you hear the words of this psalm proclaiming that God's kingdom is a place where all have enough, where all are fed, all have clean water to drink, all have appropriate clothing to wear, all have access to health care and education, all are welcome. No one is a stranger. No one is imprisoned. No one is forgotten or marginalized or pressed down. My friends, this is indeed a matter of life and death. For our neighbors, who have already died from COVID-19 and for those who fear this illness because they know that death is the most likely outcome. What does it mean for us to be gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love? My friends, this is a matter of life and death because we have heard the names, we have said them ourselves of those who have died because God's kingdom is not fully established here on this earth and all people are not raised up. No, instead, too many of our siblings are pressed down literally with knees on their necks and in their backs. We know this is a matter of life and death for the millions who are food insecure here in the United States, as well as around the world. If we are to be faithful, if we are to live into the image of God that is stamped on the very center of who we are, if we are to indeed be followers of Jesus Christ, living into his great commission to teach people to obey all he has commanded us, if these are the things we long for, then this psalm calls us to put our actions behind our words, to put our money where our mouth is, to not be silent anymore. As followers of Jesus Christ, this is who we are supposed to be. 
just in all our ways, kind in all our doings, near to all who call out, and fulfilling the desires for life, full life, abundant life, freedom, full freedom with no strings attached, and joy, joy, peace, hope for all. This is who we are called to be. By God's grace, may we be courageous. May we be called out. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my Would you pray with me? Oremos. Poderoso Dios, cuya esencia es toda amor, venimos ante tu presencia buscando respuestas. We come before you seeking answers. We come before you seeking what the faithful way forward is. No te pido una lista de cotejo, nor will I ask that you reveal to us a true and tried method. You know that all methods we have tried to make this world we live in a just and welcoming and equitable world continues to fall short. Pero si te pido sabiduría. I pray that you grant us wisdom. Te pido interesa. I pray that you grant us fortitude. The work to dismantle the structures that perpetuate rejection, discrimination, and oppression require commitment. 
y ese compromiso para desmantelar la arquitectura racista, homófoba y capitalista que ejerce opresión necesita de entereza y sabiduría. We come before you seeking healing. We come before you wanting that our whole beings be made whole. Y al pedirte que seamos hechos seres humanos íntegros, sabemos que algunos de nosotros tenemos medios para atender nuestras dolencias. And at the same time, it is more the people who are intentionally and structurally left out of quality health and social services. Perhaps, oh God, we should pray that you inspire in the church the ways and means we already have at hand to restore the dignity and integrity of all of your creation. Ayúdanos, oh Dios, en tu poder, a hacer las manos, los pies y las voces que trabajen para que cada ser humano pueda disfrutar de la dignidad que todos merecemos porque cada ser humano es creado a imagen y semejanza tuya. Junto con nuestras alabanzas y oraciones, we bring before you all of the concerns that take space in the minds and hearts and spirits of every single person that my voice reaches. Sabemos que tú escuchas la petición, el dolor y la ansiedad de cada mente, corazón y alma que estás escuchando. We know you pay attention to every voice, that voice that comes out, and perhaps even more, that voice that we keep within. Por tu misericordia, escúchanos. Pero también recuérdanos que tu iglesia tiene ya todo lo necesario para sanar enfermos, resucitar muertos, limpiar leprosos y echar fuera demonios. Recuérdanos que tu iglesia es tu colaboradora en el trabajo de restaurar la dignidad de la creación. Recuérdanoslo una vez más, oh Jesús. In your mercy, hear us. But also remind us that your church has everything it needs to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with skin diseases, and throw out demons. Remind us that your church is your co-worker in the work of restoring the dignity of your creation. Remind us, O oh Jesus, once again. Jesús, en cuyo hermoso y transformador nombre oramos, and at whose invitation we are bold to pray, saying, mas livrai-nos do mal, pois teu é o reino, o poder e a glória para sempre. Amém. Amém. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God. Let us offer our lives to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures high and low. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God in Jesus fully known. Creator, Word, and Spirit, one. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. Our Savior invites those who are drawn to him to share the feast which he has prepared. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. And then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink. This is the cup of my blood. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. The bread of life, broken for you. Thanks be to God. The cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Let us join in prayer together. Holy Spirit, you have filled us with your life. Christ, our Savior, you have embraced us in your love. God, our Mother, you have fed with your grace. Now send us out into your beloved world to share your life, your love, your grace with all. Blessing and honor and glory to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Amen. And so go out to live faithfully, to love truly, and to be in word and deed ambassadors of the love of Christ. Cuyo Jesu Christo e un hewa, el amor de Dios, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.